Welcome to the Inspire and Learn series. We are TMG Yachts, a multi-award winning dealership in Australia, specialising in multi hulls power and sail. Join us as our expert team teach you all about anchoring, docking, rigging, sail trim, maintenance and so much more, so you can build confidence in your boat handling ability. In this episode, we discuss the exciting and innovative new furling boom system developed by Lagoon Catamarans. We chat to one of the head designers before seeing it for the very first time and explaining exactly how it works. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to another Inspire and Learn episode. Today we're looking at a technical feature uh, which has just been announced. Uh, it's very exciting news uh, coming from Lagoon, uh, launching on the Lagoon 46 and the Lagoon 51. Uh, now these two models are really synonymous in the range um, with the flybridge. This is a, uh, a great feature, you know, all of our clients love the flybridge. Uh, it's a safety feature, you're, you're in a central position when you're driving the boat. The result of this is that the boom is slightly higher than it would be on, say, it's a sports top model. So with a view to making the Lagoon range even easier and even simpler to sail, uh, Lagoon at the Cannes Yachting Festival this year have announced the furling boom option. Uh, which is coming on the Lagoon 46 and the Lagoon 51. I'm joined here by Bruno Belmont, who is the multi-hull expert for Lagoon Catamarans. He's been with uh, the company a very long time. A lot of the big ideas have been worked on by Bruno uh, throughout the range. So it's really good to, to sit down with you today and understand a bit more about this, this new feature and what it involves. So can you just tell us how long have you been working on something like this? Well, the project started 12 years ago. <laughs> but we did the first set of prototypes that proven to fail. <laughs> so we restarted like five and a half years ago with fresher IDs. And we started building uh, efficient prototypes three years ago that we've been field testing since. And so uh, over the last three years, we've uh, set up one prototype on our prototype Lagoon. And we, we, we fitted two Lagoon 46 and one Lagoon 51 with the system. Two private owners who have been tested the system for some of them uh, four or five months ago. And, uh, and uh, the last one was a 51 that we fitted uh, uh, six weeks ago and has been sailing all the time since then. Yeah, okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of effort gone into it. Yeah, we, yeah. we were not alone. I mean, we, we, we had a big team. Uh, Sparkraft was one of the main uh, helper uh, uh, incident sales was also in the team and basically the whole Wishart team including Facnor uh, did a lot of work together to make it happen. So it sounds like it's a real collaboration it with is. you know three of the biggest players in the industry really. Can you tell us what's this going to offer for <coughs> someone looking at purchasing a 46 or a 51? Well the, the idea as you mentioned before is the boom is so high it's difficult to put the lazy bag or close it once you, you stop sailing. And also, uh, all these boats, the, con the, the combination of lazy jacks plus reefing lines plus make it a little more difficult, maybe, than a, than a furling system. But of course, the, the catamaran having a big roach, the furling system could not be a copy of a monohull system uh, because of the horizontal compression of the battens. We needed to have something that was extremely robust and that would, that would uh, last for a long, long time. And also, the, the, the idea was to simplify the maneuver and the look of the whole system. And so to do that, the first decision we took was to avoid having a case in which the system would be rolling in mm -hmm. because we wanted the customers to look at what they're doing and be capable of reacting in, st in case something went wrong. And then we, <coughs> we again tested and, and, and you know, made the, the system more and more robust until we uh, found out that if we were respecting four basic uh, principles, then the systems could not fail. And those principles are simple. <laughs> it's the, the, the main sheet's got to be eased completely. The main sail has got to be free to move. Mm -hmm. The boat's got to be head to win. The topping lift must be hoisted to a point where it's locked. And the, you've got to keep a fair tension on the left while you're rolling or while you're hoisting. If you respect the four, the system doesn't fail. Okay, so four simple steps for anyone using it. And can you just, you know, explain um, to me how significant this is in 
the catamaran market having a boom <coughs> of this type on this size vessel? Well, we, we believe again, uh, most of our sailors are first boat buyers. So they don't have a strong experience of sailing. So mm. uh, as you know, taking a reef uh, on a big boat or even on a small boat, it takes some experience. Uh, when you're at night, you don't really see if your block is at the right position. I mean, you have many ways of failing or breaking. With this system, by respecting those four principles, you can do it when it rains and it's dark and, and you're cold and it will work. So not only it simplifies, but for us, it makes it more secure to use. So from operating it from the cockpit, without looking at the sail, can you do it if you follow the four steps? What you need to do is have your eyes on the gooseneck all yep. the time. And you, if you see that the tension of your luff is correct, that mm -hmm. it's not too soft and not too stretched, mm -hmm. then, then that's all what you do. I, I mean, we do it many times just by ourselves. Uh, one hand with two or three lines, uh, rounds around the, the, the winch, and the other one hoisting or, or rolling. And you keep just a, t a fair tension with your hand and, and, and it works. Yeah, amazing. Simple. So this product, um, you know, obviously you've been working on it yourself uh, with Lagoon and, and the two other partners. Uh, when will, you know, will we see it in the bigger industry or is it just a lagoon uh, for now? The, the development, I mean, like the 12 years of research uh, was Lagoon's commitment together with Sparkraft and the Wishar Group and Incidents. So all, all, uh, all this re makes it a lagoon furling boom. Mm. <laughs> and so we'll have the exclusivity for a while. We will open it at one point. Boom. Yeah, okay. And yeah, just I'd like to say congratulations because you know you have a reputation for you know breaking the uh, the rules and and in a good way. So it's really exciting to see this coming on uh, on a lagoon. Thank you. With lagoon, so well done. Thank you. Thanks. So it is really exciting to uh, hear about this new option launching in 2024. Let's take a look now at the intricacies of the system and how it works on board Lagoon 46. We're on a Lagoon 46 in La Rochelle today, and this is the very first Lagoon 46 to be fitted with the production spec furling boom from Lagoon. Now there have been other boats fitted with the prototype models, a couple of Lagoon 46s and a Lagoon 51. These have undergone some quite rigorous testing, uh, actually owners testing these as well, so we get direct owner feedback over the last few years. So let's take a look through the systems and the operation of this revolutionary new system to see what you get from the factory package when you tick that option on board your Lagoon 46 or 51. So being a brand new product, this is the first time I've seen this setup in the flesh. I saw some pictures of the prototypes and they did look very good, but you know, initial impressions here is that it is very well engineered. It's not under engineered at all. Um, you can see my hand against the, the front mandrel here. Um, it is a very, you know, a sizable size, made of very thick stainless steel. The boom itself is probably about 180 centimeters diameter, and then the sail wraps around that. And this system, the whole boom rotates. So there's a, a mandrel with a pivot a bearings here at the front end of the boom, and then a bearings at the stern end as well. So the main sheet goes all the way to the back of the boom, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Now there are kind of three main lines that you use when you're hoisting and lowering the system. You have the main halyard, which pulls the sail up, and you have the furling line, which goes into the mandrel at the front end of the boom. And that's what pulls the sail down as you're easing the halyard to furl. So it's very similar to the setup that we have really on the jib. It's a, there's a drum and the furling line as the sail goes up, gets hoisted onto the drum. And then to furl the sail, you ease the halyard and pull on the furling line and this rotates the boom rolling sail onto the boom. The third line that we have on this setup is the topping lift. And this controls the height of the boom. It's very important that the topping lift is at a set height so that the boom and the luff of the mainsail are at 90 degrees to each other so that you get a nice load up here on the front end of the boom where the bolt rope loads up. It's beautifully set up. You can see because of the, the rake in the mast that we have on a catamaran and the design of this setup, the, the track is actually offset off the back of the mast for the initial period. About one third of the way up it joins um, uh, onto a solid uh, wing that comes off the back of the mast and then by the top of the mast it is butted up right against it. So that's just to allow the uh, dimensions of the furling aspect uh, on this new mainsail. One noticeable feature of this system is that the sail is not in a canoe boom. There are some brands of furling sails more significantly on monohulls, 
um, that where the sail is, is encased in a carbon fiber or a fiberglass casing. Uh, this isn't done on this setup and there are no plans to do it. The idea is to keep this as simple as possible and as visible as possible. So when you're operating the system, you really got good clarity on the whole operation that's ongoing. This is in the stowed position at the moment. We're obviously in a marina, we're not sailing. And there is a bag, a sail bag, uh, which is completely removable. But when you stow the sail uh, for storage or when you're not using it, you can put this bag over the sail to protect it and make it look nice and neat and keep the birds off. Let's head to the back end of the boom now to look at the system uh, there and how that operates in conjunction with the front end. Now, the main difference I notice here at the back of the boom is traditionally the main sheet runs vertically from the top of the coach roof up to the underside of the boom where it goes around a strop on the boom. With the boom uh, rotating in this instance, this isn't possible. So the main sheet does angle much further back to the back of the boom, but this shouldn't impact the handling or performance of the mainsail and the main sheet at all. The actual mechanism on the aft end of the boom is a very neat setup. This is a beautiful molded stainless steel fitting. It's a one piece fitting for the whole setup. So it's got built-in mounting points for the main sheet, built-in mounting points for the topping lift and very nicely sculpted uh, entry points for the main sheet and the required uh, lines. So a very neat setup here. Inside this system, we have the furling mechanism or the bearings that allow the boom to rotate independently of the hardware on the back, but it's a really nice setup. Uh, it really looks the part in, uh, in this whole setup of the furling boom. Making our way to the helm station, the first thing that strikes me is that there are no reefing lines, and this is fantastic. Reefing lines are bulky, they're quite thick and they take up a lot of space. So this furling boom setup means there are no reefing lines, so plenty of more space for the rest of your ropes. All the operation of the furling can be done from these two electric winches here. Great location, you can monitor both, you can ease with one hand and you can hoist on an electric winch with another or grind it manually if you're really game enough. So again, a cool thing that can be done by one person on this setup, so another great feature. Now you might be wondering why is it taken so long to have a factory option furling mainsail on a lagoon or a catamaran in general? That is because the mainsail on a catamaran is a high roach. So it is not a straight line between the back of the boom and the top of the mast. It's high roach, which means it comes out and then back into the mast. And we need that. We need that for the power and we need that for the performance on a sailing catamaran. The mainsail on a catamaran is also fully battened and that's integral for holding the structure of the high roach mainsail. So the combination of the full batten main and the high roach aspect means that it's hard to do a furling boom system. But that's been achieved here. All the battens are level, the sail holds its structure and it will operate very well as we can see in this video. Again, like I said, the operation of this furling system just relies on three lines, a topping lift, which is set and forget, and the two lines, the main control lines are the main halyard and the furling line. It's also important to mention that the main sheet uh, that controls the power in the sail should be completely eased uh, and the boat must be head to wind. That's the one unconditional on this is that the main sheet's eased and the boat's head to wind so that there is zero wind or as little as possible wind filling the sail so there's no pressure, makes the furling operation a lot more straightforward. So in order to hoist the main sail, we need to load the main halyard on to the electric winch or the manual winch and release the furler. Now it's good to put just one turn or two turns on this when you do undo the jammer in case there is any tension in it. But for the hoist, we just want to keep one turn. So we're keeping tension on the furling line as we hoist the halyard. Now this just makes sure that the line doesn't get spooled up or tangled or turns into a bit of a, uh, a spider's nest or spider's web in the, um, in the mandrel. Once I've done this, it's just a case of press and go. Wow, that's going up very, very easily. It's turning really nicely. The winch isn't overloaded. And I tried it on the slow setting, but the fast setting is good enough. Fast setting sends it up nice and quickly. It's still the two to one halyard that we have here. So you still got the same power that you would on the normal uh, Lagoon 46 setup for hoisting the mainsail. Now we are on the dock and this boat still hasn't been fully commissioned. The rig is good to go, but there are still a few things ongoing on this boat. So we can't sail the boat today, uh, but we can, luckily we're head to wind, almost perfectly on the nose. So we can demonstrate this to you. 
I'll just go a little bit higher and then I'll drop it down, but it's really cool. I can see it really nicely from here. It's really cool to see it working. Amazing, going up really, really nicely. For lowering or furling the mainsail, even just reefing, you know, you can bring this down to one and a half, two, two and a half reefs. There's really no defined reefing point on this sail. It's you pull it down as far as you're comfortable with when the wind builds. In terms of furling the sail, we do the exact opposite from what we just did. So this time I'm going to be locking off the furling line so that it can't slip through. You see, I've loaded the furling line back on the winch now into the teeth, ready to operate electronically with these buttons here. The next task is to release the halyard, just like you would when dropping the sail normally. Take it out of the teeth. I'm gonna take off, maybe leave two turns on there. I haven't got a huge amount of sail up leave two turns on, and with the push of a button on the furling line winch, the sail comes down. That's amazing. So I was keeping tension on the main halyard here, and the sail was just coming down really nicely. Again, nice and fast. It's got good purchase, this winch. The drum is quite large, so it's really quite a fast way to furl the sail, and we're back to where we started and the sail is neatly furled. Bruno, Lagoon, I am very impressed with you for making that such a simple and easy experience. Well done. Commendations to everyone involved, it was awesome. Now you can see here that this really is a clever setup. It's simple, it's easy to use, it looks great. I can see it very easily from the maneuvering winches. So I think this is a real winner and a real game changer. It's really quite incredible to see what 12 years of research and development can do. I think, you know, the two years of product prototyping and testing that have gone on, um, you can, it's evident. You can see it's a well thought out, it's a polished uh, product, and it's gonna be very exciting to deliver these for our Australian clients on the Lagoon 46 and the Lagoon 51. This system is exclusive to Lagoon, it's a Lagoon product. So you can't get this anywhere else and it's a game changer for the Lagoon models that it's available on. My name is Joe Fox from the team at TMG Yachts. If you did enjoy this video and want to learn more either about the boats we're on or the system that we've just explored, do let us know. I'd like to thank Bruno Belmont for being part of this and his work in the project. Do like and subscribe if you do want to be updated with regular updates and information on the products we offer. Join us in the next episode for more how-tos, interviews and updated news. See you then.